Okay, accounting crises, part two. I'm going to try to uh, move forward here. So I've gone over the basic idea that, in theory, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, know what I mean. Uh, the client prepares the financials, and we just put the report on the front. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, know what I mean. Okay, then there's this idea of independence. And there's one area that I think the accounting industry has this pretty much completely wrong, especially with regard to SEC clients, and I think it's a very easy way to solve uh, the whole issue. And then um, when it comes to smaller companies, I, I, I think that the, the rules are completely out of whack with reality. Smaller companies, um, most of the time, don't or self-employed individuals or companies of you know, 50 or less people. Um, for the most part, their accounting staff aren't always going to know every single accounting rule that's out there, plus be um, fully up to date with all the accounting principles. There are some CPAs that may work at companies that are ready to go public or have already gone public. Um, in accounting departments, but as a general rule, smaller companies that do say a oh, hundred million or uh, ten million or less, which is the, actually the majority of the com the country, really. Um, but you know, they're not going to employ a, a a full CPA that's fully up to date and all the accounting principles that's able to produce set of financial statements to just hand to a CPA or they can just slap a report on and walk away. It doesn't really happen, okay? And it's manifest in both the tools that we use, such as Caseware and CaseView, the fact that uh, accounting packages even exist tell you <laughs> it's self-evident that the accounting industry does not follow that prescribed um, mythical standard by which the CPA is is, is not responsible is not responsible for the for the contents of the financial statements he's merely a person that renders an opinion on that or lack thereof well it's almost a underhanded way to get out of lawsuits but it doesn't really fit reality and because it doesn't fit reality, I doubt it really gets anybody out of any lawsuits, which is another reason why I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that the whole idea, the whole concept of independence is fundamentally flawed when it comes to the rules that are set up for the, uh, the accounting standard. Um, what I'm not going to say is that... Um, It's okay for a, a CPA to go and um, work on the books for a company he has a large investment in, massage the numbers, and come out a winner in the day into the quarter. Any kind of fraud is not okay. But the idea of independence has grown to too far of a, of a gap in, in, in the accounting industry in America. When I first started out in the accounting industry, you had to be independent, or it's called independent in appearance and fact. But the most important part of that, in my mind at least, is fact. Because fact is fact if you are independent. And what does it mean by independence? Independence means you don't have any stake or motivation to change the outcome financial statements you're working on, you're just there to get them to come out to be the correct answer to the best of your ability and knowledge. It doesn't mean you're perfect to be independent, it's a state of mind. So for example, someone were to ask, want me to pick a winner between the colors orange and red, I wouldn't care. <laughs> Well, it does require a judgment call, but, but, or intrinsically, the, you know, numbers, you know, have no personality, right? So, if you were to ask me what number is, has a higher value than the other, you know, 
he would come up with all sorts of convoluted arguments to to uh, to explain why seven is greater than nine. I would just I wouldn't care that seven is, nine is greater than seven. I would just say nine is nine and seven is seven and nine is bigger than seven. That's what independence is. You 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 you're impartial. Absolutely impartial. Now, a few years after I got licensed, this new idea, someone started a some uh, lack of a better word, wise ass out there decided to think about this a little a little more strenuously and get a little bit too academic and decided to say that if um, a CPA makes a journal entry for a client during the course of an audit review or compilation that they're not independent they're they're do they're they're creating the records they're not merely reporting on the records they're creating the records therefore that's an independence problem in a compilation you can you can be independent uh, by the rules but you have to disclose that you're not independent and I think it's prohibited in both reviews and audits from if you're not independent then you're prohibited from doing both those functions well, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard when it comes to things like adjusting journal entries. Frankly, it's it's crazy because it doesn't fit the reality of the situation, at least in as much as the fact that we, as accountants, there's a company out there called Caseware International. There's another company out there that makes ePace. And there's another. Co there's plenty of companies out there that make trial balance packages, and in as much as they actually even sell these accounting packages, is proof prima facie on its face that independence is lacking. Because you know what? There's no reason for that, that for those accounting packages to exist other than to add numbers up for tax returns, and that's it. So case view is evidence on its face that independence is lacking in the accounting industry. Yet no one cares about that. Why? Because it's unrealistic. Ah. But when you get the little test question on the bottom where it says, if you make a journal entry for your client, are you independent or not? You're supposed to circle the no. Right? And on that, people actually try to adhere to it and say, I'm not going to make the journal entry for this person or that person, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or I think they have some kind of ethical dilemma. Let's talk about what the real ethical dilemma is. The real ethical dilemma is the number is either right or wrong. If the number is incorrect and you have the knowledge by which to make that number correct and the skill to do so, whether you walk up to your client, whisper in their ear and tell them to make the entry, or you physically do it yourself without the client knowing it, because I'll tell you one thing, any client that needs an adjusting journal entry is not sophisticated in the first place enough they, they don't know all the accounting principles anyway they can't be independent they, they don't understand they don't understand all the nuances of all these questions we're answering here on these checklists they don't right and so that being the case whether I tell them what to do and they walk away not understanding it or I make the entry physically at the computer, that has nothing to do with independence. What has to do with independence is whether, in fact, by my making that journal entry, whether that influence that I have on the financial statements is going to financially financially benefit me, me or not. Benefit me or, me or not, other than a charging a reasonable fee for just doing the accounting right because we're accountants that's what we do for a living but if it was a major company that you had an investment in and this journal entry is going to make your stock go up a couple bucks why that's not independent that's the question now now the other part of the thing was being independent in appearance they wanted to hold up to the standard of being independent in appearance and fact. I do agree 
whenever at all possible. If a client can make their own journal entries and they have the knowledge to do that, they should do it first. But if they lack the knowledge and they lack the funds to have you conduct a CPE course for them for an eight hour day to, to learn all the, the or, or a week for all the accounting principles they need to know to do their job, plus expecting them to retain that, it's not realistic. So the bottom line test should be on situations where clients need assistance with the accounting and, and the journal entries. The bottom line should be that does this journal entry have any impact upon my ability, my, my earnings, my investment? You couldn't even do, you're not even allowed to do an audit if you have an investment in a company. And that I agree with. A compilation, a review, or anything like that. In any situation where you have actually have a financial stake in the accounting, that's where it should matter. None of this splitting hairs and stuff like that. We're doing a lot of splitting hairs in, in accounting. The next complaint, I'll start in a sec.